trading values are wrecked. Um, yeah, I care about it. Nah, I don't. Um, but they are wrecked. Um, and I'll kind of explain why. Um, there's this new thing called the pity system. So, basically the pity system means that in like 128 steps off your gleam or your room, you will be guaranteed to get an encounter. Okay, so there's been times where you might go two hours and you've not seen anything. And you're like, I hate this game. I hate it. I'm a way to play Adopt Me. Um, you know, people go through those phases because they've used the boost coins and they've got nothing back. So the developers thought, here's a great idea. Um, we're actually going to make it easier for people to get some sort of success. So they return back to the game. Good point, good point. Um, people who got upset are like the hardcore like gamma hunters. Kind of really just devalues the chase and the hunt because once you get to your pity system, if you have done your mastery, um, basically you have a one in five chance of encountering a gamma, essentially. Yeah. Um, you still have the normal RNG encounter rates on everything because you can't stack roaming and gleaming together. So as an example, um, everyone's using egg meal example, um, but let's say dusk it, um, with, they have got the boost on and I put my gleaming pity on, I've still one in 128 for me to hit that, it's still going to be pretty hard, um, it's not guaranteed, I might end up going to Ignis Hollow and getting a gleam skillava. So you can kind of tailor it to where it gives you a chance, but it is still a lottery it's still a roll of the dice where values have changed is you can't do it on 3d so you can't influence getting a 3d um i've tried um doesn't work on soft resets and it does not work on copies so essentially those values should go up um what you'll now find is people will get more success in getting rarer things it's not that they are less rare um it's just that more players will spend more money on boosts because of the pity system and that is basically it cleared up um without going into huge context but a few other things um so let's say if i let, let's let's just do it here as an example okay let's turn my gloom my gleaming pity on and let's stick it on 50. okay now when this is on if i go to the rally and I get gleam calf notes, it doesn't affect my counter. Okay. On the roaming one, if I have the roaming on and I hit a corrupted lumion, it does not affect my count. Say on my um my roaming one. So if I say if I have my roaming one here and I go into the grass and I encounter a cephalops, as an example. But what's then gonna happen is my pity system will then reset basically okay um so we've got a kabonga doesn't affect it now i've turned off my gleaming which is fine so my pity is i've turned off both of them so if i put on my roman pity sorry it's on 102 if i go here it'll because it's not a roamer it'll go down to 101 if it had Cephalops, Protagon, Mutagon, any of the rumors I've encountered, it will obviously then go on. So if I click on to here, now I'm down to 101. Okay, so I want a Gleaming Pity. Um, so let's go to somewhere. Now, <laughs> I hit this twice yesterday. Um, both times I hit a Gamma Scalava. Um, just, so it's one on five draw. So if I go to Igneous Hollow here, now, because I have my Roamer boost on, there is a chance I could get a Gleam Roamer, but again, RNG needs to come to that effect. So, let's look at the potential outcomes. I'm in Igneous Hollow right now, okay? So I could get Gleaming Scalava, Cradle, Igneo. Gamma, Scalava, Cradle, Igneo. I could get Gleaming or Gamma, Vari. Or I could get a potential gleam or gamma rumor in my next encounter. Okay. So there are the options now. Cradle and Scalava are common. Igneal is now one in fifty for me to get a chance, but it's then you do five to one for a gamma. So it goes to what one and 
250 ish whatever so no matter what this next encounter i should get a glean sorry that's on the one if only that was the gamma so now my pity system should kick in yeah i didn't, I didn't turn my pity system on it could have been a gamma vary it could have been a gamma vary What a pity. It could have been a Gamma Vari. <laughs> um, so you've got one in five chance of it being a Gamma. Like so. Oh, what a pity. What a pity. Give me another Gamma Vari. I didn't turn it on. <laughs> no, it's not going to be another I hate Lumion Legacy. Um, but that's exactly how it goes. Um, this is now my third time I've hit pity <laughs> in Igneous Hollow, and it's the third Gamma Scalava I've got in Igneous Hollow. So it's not really complicated, guys. Um, the one bit everybody's missing out on is the fact you need to use those boost coins to reach pity, because you still have to do those steps. So, your nimble in a Gamma Var. <laughs> Oh. Anyway, so let's kind of go through it then. So we've dropped, I'm going to drop this guy off for a second and I'll show you the other two I got from Pity. And I can also check my rally just to show you. So, I mean, maybe it. One pit. Pity. No, I got two off Pity. Yeah, those two, and then I'm just getting Scalavas flat out here. Um, so if we go through to the pity system right now, it's now reset, as you can see. It's in the bottom right-hand corner here on 128. Okay, so on 128. Now, to get the 128 steps, you basically have to use three base coins, give or take, right? So let's go. Let's... Let's see how long it takes. We're in 40 minutes right now. Okay. We're in 40 minutes on that, okay. So let's see how many encounters we can get in. I usually say it's an average probably around about four a minute, normally. Probably usually about four encounters a minute. Okay, so there's 55, just swapped them a clock. Okay, let's see how many we can get in a minute. One. Esclave is number one. Two. Okay. Just waiting. I'm just watching my clock. Now, Igneous Hollow has no... Well, it has no real slow encounters except for Igneous Premonition. Three. So, to max out your boosts you want to go to fast areas to lower down your pity thing is though you could try and lower down your pity and you could encounter straight away there's four encounters block hasn't changed okay, five on five and it just turned okay so basically four encounters a minute okay so let's do a bit of mavs so if you do four encounters a minute So if we open my calculator here. So 128 divided by 4. 32 minutes. So 32 minutes it takes, guys, to achieve 128 encounters. There's a Cephalops that I just don't care about. Now, Cephalops obviously doesn't impact my my gleam at all my glean pity but say i do get a an encounter here within the next minute or two that will obviously reset it in the bottom right hand corner of my screen you should see now it's now what 119 okay i'll tell you what i'm going to check my ranch because in my ranch if we've got a gleam there it should also not affect my pity 
So I'm just kind of hoping, 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 just for the sake of this video, it shows you. So let's go the rancher. Okay, no gleams there at all, okay. But even to say if there was, it doesn't affect it. So what I would suggest to you, just to get the most out of the your gleam and your boat your boosts. Um I would suggest use the gleam one because even to get a gleam roamer is gonna be really really tough. It's gonna be really really tough. Okay. And if it happens, it happens. Well this is where that's good, okay. So this is where it gets really interesting because as you can see I've used my my boost and I've encountered what two roamers in the space of what five ten minutes. If I had my room pity on, both of them are reset. So you're actually better running the gleam one. Plus people prefer gleams and gammas compared to the likes of everything else. It's not so good ability, don't care. So this for me is where the value arguments coming up here at the moment because people are just like, yeah, but it's like ruined the chances of ruined the odds of encountering. Um, it has and it hasn't. It has in the sense of it's lowered the difficulty and the rarity of seeing a gleam or a better encounter. So more people are actually winning. There's more success being seen now. The odds are still the, the same. The system is still the same. The only difference is there will be more more wins because more players are going to actively get involved in it. Yeah. That said, you can use the pity system to your advantage. So, let's say for example, you wanted a gamma scorb. If you've got your pity down to one, you can turn it off. Say you went on right four, just for the quickest encounters. Kept going through there and got it down to one. You could then go to pull up corp. Turn it on, and then you're either going to get a Gleam or Gamma Orb, or you're going to get a Gleam or Gamma Neutral, or a Paramind, or a Vary. So, there is ways that you can kind of influence what you're going to get, because you know there's going to be a success. There's going to be some sort of success. Now, right rares are still right rares, guys. It doesn't matter. It still, still comes down to chance on it. But I hope that kind of explains to you how the pity system works. If it doesn't, I don't know. I don't know. But that's how it works. So you'll see more people get success, more players spend and boosts. The huge, huge thing people have forgot about is the amount of steps that you're going to do. So essentially. For three gleam boost tokens because it's going to be 32 minutes if you're a fast hunter like myself don't mess about in between encounters 32 minutes you should get your 128 encounters within those three boosts those three boosts are 45 minutes if you're going for a roamer you're going to need to use four boost coins you need to use four using the pity system if that's what you're aiming for. You cannot stack them up. But you can lower your chances as normal. You could get down to your gleam pity. Have your roamer on, which obviously lowers your roamer encounter chances. To what they should be as normal compared to without boost. That is the only thing you can do. You cannot stack pity system. You can't do it. As for the trading values thing, um, yeah, I think they will 
be influenced. Um, they will, they will change because there will be more success. And I personally don't like the trading values. I understand why they're there. I understand how they're dictated. But what's now going to happen is with more success, the frequency of better captures, essentially. What's now going to happen is demand will change. So, yes, getting values will change. Um, how do the trading community feel about it? I think they're in a case of let, let's wait and see. Um, the odds are still there. Demand will change. Um, 3D's value should naturally go up. Um, alpha reskin copies value should go up because there's a higher level of difficulty to get them because they aren't with the petty system. Um, Mutagon and Cephalops Flames don't really care because they're soft for settable. Um, and then coupling isn't affected, but you could sit and hoard magnets all day long, so the value of that shouldn't really be affected, to be honest with you. Um, so, a few things values, a few small value changes, I guess. Um, I can see happening here as well. So, very simple, guys. I appreciate obviously you went through this and I'm explaining to you all about the system, how it works. But essentially, the takeaways are this if you get down to your pity, well, actually, the biggest thing you need to do is your mastery. If you have not done your mastery, you're ruling yourself out for a chance on that pity being a potential gamma compared to your glean. That is the biggest message I have to say to you. So I have max mastery um, and I've done videos on mastery loads and loads of times before. I'm just going to point in the air so I know where I can put it in. This here video here should help you out. Just dance on my fingers this way. I'll, I'll throw it in somewhere like there. Um, if not, just feeling warm, calm, I'm calling it seven mastery. Okay, if I can be bothered putting it in. Um, so yeah, for me guys, do your mastery. Give yourself a chance of getting a gamma. Um, when you're on your pity, go to the area that you want to, um, where you potentially want to get something. But for example, I want a gamma igneo. If I come to igneous hollow, essentially it's still a 150 chance that an igneo is going to pop out. Then I'll get a gleam igneo. Then, if my gamma comes in, it's like times five on that. Like a one in five chance. So I'm trying to influence my rates of getting an igneal. But at the same time, guys, it's a rule of the dice. RNG still plays its part in that essentially 50 to 1 chance that igneal even appears. Just like it was a 1 in 100 chance that Vary appeared and I'm an idiot and it didn't stick on my, my pity. What a pity. What a pity. Didn't turn on my pity. Um... So that should explain it for you. Um, on the rumors, I guess because you can use the rumor petty system now, you've got probably a better chance of encountering rumors, so it might affect the value of secret abilities. I think you might see more of them. Um, but I think they're a bit less in demand. People are more interested in rumors. So essentially, RNG still exists. There's still a number that exists. Use the pity system to influence what you can when you're doing it to get the most out of it. I would also rally something as well because you can potentially rally something, something good and something, something great there. So let's go back to your rally just to show you. Also in the update guys, the secret ability. Um, you can now rally secret abilities. Far far easier now. Let me show you this. So you've seen that I've had calf notes in. Yeah, so let me show you who's in my party and what it's all about. 
obviously guys I'm doing this completely unedited just to show you exactly how it all works okay so I've had no secret abilities here okay but if we look here now I have a uh, mood tune if it ever wants to load up um this graphic just doesn't want to load up here at all um it's secret ability here guys um which means i've got a higher chance of getting secret ability now before especially mutune because and trumble because you can't dictate what comes out with it um it basically means you've got a higher chance of getting a secret ability by even using your party leading so what I would suggest to everybody when they're using their Gleam Hunt. Um, rally something. Rally a secret ability in there as well. So you can influence it being a, a secret ability. If you're Gleaming, you've got a chance of getting a Gleam secret ability as well. Um, it does not affect your petty count one bit at all. And when you get your petty, influence what you do. If you find this video helpful, um, Smash a like, hit subscribe, haven't asked you to do that yet. Um, do your mastery and make sure you've got the right amount of boost tokens. Try and hit your pity system. So if you're going to go gleam hunting, three boost tokens minimum. Um, if you're going to go for a roamer on your pity system, you need to be using four boost tokens. Okay, so to cover you for both. If you wanted to run them at the same time, but you can only run one pity system, um, I would say run three gleam uh, and four roam boost if you're going to do it. So let me know down in the comment section below if that helps. Um, I hope it has. I know people are finding it a wee bit confusing, but there's a real life example. Um, as you can see, I've been doing this since 128. I've done 50 odd encounters. I'm a Moe timers down here now. As you can see, I've got 75 left. If I encounter a Gamma or a Gleam next, that will then reset. Simple as that. But for me, guys, I think it's been a great success. I've hit Pity three times. And I've now got three Pity Scalavas. It's out Navari because I didn't turn it on. So, it's all part of the fun, guys. Hope that helps, and I'm going to leave it off there. Whoop, whoop, keep it country. See you next time.